All right. Guess you can hear me. I can hear myself. Praise the Lord. The Lord is worthy, isn't he? Thank you. He's worthy. Thank you, Lord. Agree me in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word. We give you all praise and glory and honor for who you are, Lord. And we ask, Lord, that you will speak to our hearts tonight, Lord. Minister to our needs, Lord. Lord, make plain what you have us to hear tonight, Lord, in Jesus' name. We need to hear from you, Lord, and no other voice, Lord. Speak, Lord, for those who are in need, Lord. Speak those, Lord, to those who are not here, Lord, who wanted to be here, Lord. Speak to those, Lord, who need a healing, who need a deliverance, Lord. Speak to those, Lord, who their mind isn't right tonight, Lord. And we ask you will give them a mind of Christ tonight, Lord, in Jesus' name. We thank you for your anointing. We ask your anointing will move tonight, Lord, for we know that the anointing does break the yokes. And we ask you to lead us and guide us in your spirit and your truth. Have your way tonight, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Thank you, Lord. He's worthy, isn't he? Amen. amen. He is worthy. Uh, I do, you know, I, there's a, uh, a young boy that we pray for. And uh, I had mentioned him to uh, the pastor. His name is Candom, and uh, he has leukemia, and uh, we pray for him. He's on our prayer list, and they were in a paper about like maybe uh, last week or a week before on a Sunday, and uh, he's uh, going through the process, leukemia process, and we pray for him. But I read in that article, uh, in an article, his mother has said that one of his favorite words that he writes now is the word hope. He writes that everywhere. And now, Candom, going through this process, his mother understands the Lord. His father understands the Lord. But he may be a bit young to understand the power of God and God's healing process and how God died on the cross, Jesus died on the cross for our sins and for us to be healed. He may not understand that. But you know what he's writing, though? He's writing hope, and he doesn't even know the whole story. He may hear the story, but he might not understand the story. But guess what? We understand the story. Amen? So I'm saying that to whatever that we're going through, whatever it might be, right? Lean on that same thing that Candom's leaning on, is the hope. And that hope is Jesus Christ, amen, for his healing. So whatever we're going through, you know, lean on that hope because that's what we're going to talk about tonight. You know, whatever situation that we're in, whatever w situation that we know of people being in, lean on that hope. I know that uh, in today's society where we have a lot of uh, uh, people going through situations, our government, other governments. And so what they try to do is for us to get out of these situations, they want to say anything but God. What they want to say is we'll handle it through a budget. We'll set up some kind of team to investigate and find out what we should do. Some people in our family members who's raising kids they say, well, mom, dad, you know, what should we, how are we going to get out of this? You know what they do? They try to make it as though they are God. They, they try to, they don't tell the children the truth. God gave me as you a gift. But he supplies our needs. So that, that is the truth. Pastors. The congregations come to them. They want to be God's. They want to take some of God's glory. God's not having that. God's not having that. He said that he will not share his glory with anyone. Amen? He's not sharing his glory with anyone. So that's what we're going to talk about tonight. You know, uh, God's glory, actually. Uh, we, had, uh, he, we had shared that in uh, the Overcomers about God's glory, but it won't be exactly God's glory, but in a roundabout way it will be. If you have your Bibles... Turn to John 15, chapter John, I mean, uh, John chapter 15, and we're going to read probably the first six verses. 
and it's about abiding in the vine. Amen. Uh, Brother uh, George sung that this morning, abiding in the vine, abiding in the vine. Amen. So that's what we all, that's what, isn't that what Candom's doing? Isn't he abiding in the vine? He's abiding in the vine. And we all are. Amen. So we're going to read that and we're going to uh, go over and dissect some of the verses. Amen. Amen. Verse one. He says, I am the true vine and my father is the. Every branch in me that bear fruit. He taketh away, and every branch that bear fruit, he purges it, that it may bring forth more fruit. Now, ye came through the word which I have spoken unto you. Abide in me, and I in you. As the branches can bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine. No more can ye, except ye abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. He that abideth in me and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me, ye can't do nothing. If a man abideth not in me, he is cast as a branch and is withered. And men gather them and cast them into the fire, and they are burnt. Amen. I'm going to read these verses again, and I'm going to slow down. Because see, when we read, I know, I'm speaking for myself. When I read this here, I read it, you know, real quick, real quick. But let's just slow it down. Because there's something in here that I didn't see before. And it may be something in here that you didn't see. So we're going to go back through it, and we're going to read it, and we're going to dissect a few of these verses here, and find out what exactly does he mean. How we should abide in him that anything that is not of him will not prosper and it will die. Let me say that again because, see, the world don't understand that. If you tell the world that, you mean all the people that don't believe in Jesus Christ is going to die and wither? Right. Right. They think about that. I don't know how many billions of people there is in the world. That we're in the United States, we're in the world. I don't know if it's seven billion, I forget how many billion it is. That's a lot of people. There's a lot of people who are not abiding in the vine. Amen? A lot. Verse one I am the true vine, and the Father is the husband. Now, Jesus is the vine. But guess who waters that vine and takes care of that vine? God the Father Himself. God the Father self. You know what? Jesus said everything in, in, in John 17. Jesus prayed to the Father. Everything that he did was for his Father. He did not sway or go to the left or to the right. He didn't do what he did. He did how close he is to his Father because they're one. He abided in the words and the things that his Father told him to do. Verse 2. Every branch that beareth not fruit taketh away, and every branch that bear fruit, he purges it, that it may be brought forth more fruit. Now, when you read that, there, if, you, if you read that verse there, there is a separation that's taking place. He's separating here. He's separating. Branches that don't produce fruit are separated. They're taken away from branches that produces fruit. Here's some examples. He separates wheat and what? Tear. He separates lightness and what? Darkness. He separates unrighteous and righteous. He separates life and death. Now you understand that scripture. That's what he was saying in this scripture here, that there is a separation of his people. He wanted the Israelites to be separate from the Gentiles and anybody else. He wanted them separate. Why? To be his own. To have that own identity of himself. 
We have to have our, our own identity of Jesus Christ. We have our own personal identity of who we are. But the bottom line is we are children of God. We are abiding in that same vine. We are branches, but we're abiding in that vine. Amen. So there's a separation. Branches are purged. Another thing is branches are purged. And why are branches purged? Bring more fruit. So what he does is he chastises us. He develops us into his disciples that he wants us to be. He strengthens our character. And he strengthens our faith to produce more fruit. So you're not just maturing in Christ just to, well, I'm closer to God. You are being matured in Christ to produce more fruit. We have to produce more and more fruit. Amen. Verse three. Now ye are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. We are sanctified every time Jesus speak to us. And if we abide in his word, we are being washed. Amen. I know a lot of folks wash dishes. I had some uh, uh, blackberries I was eating. And it was on a bowl. I had it in a bowl. And I was letting the water run over it. I'm watching this water it's just running and running and running. And guess what? As long as that water is running and running over that bowl, that bowl was being washed and cleaned. The blackberry stains, they were coming clean. Amen? So if you were being washed, right, by the word of God, and you're letting that word wash you and wash you and wash you, you're being cleansed. Every time you hear the word of God, every time you preach or teach the word of God, we're being cleansed. We're being sanctified through his word. Amen. That's what it is. We're being cleaned. Right now we're being washed, sanctified. Amen. Old things are being more taken away now. We're becoming more and more like Jesus. Amen. Verse four. Abide, he says, abide in me and I in you, as the branches cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine. No more can ye abide in me. Branches needs a source to produce fruit and to live. What branches? Who's the vine? Jesus. You cut ourselves from the vine, from that source of life. And you will wither. And not only will you wither, he said in his word, he's going to cut you off. You're not being produceful. You're not producing anything. Amen. You take a fish out of water. I like to use this. I always like to use this analogy. You take a fish out of water, which is the water is the source. What's the fish going to do? It's going to die. You take a plant out of the soil, out of the ground. You take that away. The source of that plant is the ground. You take that away. It's going to die. This is the thing. If you take man away from God, man will die. Man will die. Amen? It will die. And that, 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 that fruit, that vine, that main vine, that's where we get our source. That's where it's life. These words that we're speaking, these words that you read, it is life. It's abiding in that vine. That's why we abide in the vine. That's why he wants us to rely on him and no one else and nothing else. Because there is nothing else that gives life other than himself. Jesus Christ is the life giver. Amen. He is the life giver. And he doesn't want us to revert to anything else but him. Verse 5. I am the vine, you are the branches. He that abideth in me and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me, you can do nothing. So the things I was doing before I started abiding in the vine, it was useless. It was in vain. It meant nothing. Everything that we do, we must abide in the vine. 
Amen? Everything. Here's a scripture that's overlooked. This scripture is overlooked. How do you get in the vine? How do you get in the vine? What qualifies us to be in the vine or, or taking part in the vine? There's a scripture. Ye must be. Say it again. Ye must be. People take that scripture lightly. That is a very important scripture because if you're not born again, you're not into the vine. You cannot enter in, he said, the kingdom of God. That scripture is overlooked. It's overlooked. You have to tell people, if you are not born again, you cannot reach the kingdom of God. You can't take a part of being in the vine. You can't receive the things of God. And people have to know that. They must be born again. He didn't say in there, I don't think it says you, you should be born again. I don't think that was an option. I don't think it was. I think he said you must be born again. Isn't that what he said? We must be born again. Amen? Amen. Abiding in the vine. What does that mean? Here's what it means. No, first of all, this, 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 this fruit that we're talking about. He says, I am the vine, you are the branches, you abide in me in the same, bringing forth much fruit. Okay, the fruit we're supposed to bring. Now, now, folks think, you know, the fruit, they think, you know, oh, we're going to bring in uh, souls or, or, or soul winning. They think that's it. They think that's it alone. That's part of it. Believe me, that's part of it. But in this chapter here, he talked about he mentioned three things in this chapter 15. He mentions he mentions prayer. He mentions joy and he mentions love. And you continue to read that. And prayer. Now, let me tell you something about prayer. I'll tell you something about prayer. When somebody asks you to pray for them, when they ask you to pray for them, they want you to abide in the vine. They don't want you praying to somebody else. They want you to go before God for them and let their requests be known of the situation that they're in and they're going through. That's what that means. So that's, that's a fruit. That's a fr and you know what? If you ask people if there's something that I can pray for you for, and if they were honest, everybody you ask would give you a prayer request. Everybody. Everybody. So that's being fruitful when you pray for people. That's being fruitful. Amen. The other fruit that we're talking about is you look in uh, uh, Galatians 5.22. That's where the rest of the fruit is. Amen. That's where the, rest, where the rest of the fruit is. Amen. It's in Galatians. Verse 6. If a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch and is what? Withered. And men gathered them and cast them into fire. And they are what? They're burnt. Now, abiding in Christ means this. Part of it. Believing that he is the son of God. You got to believe that. Receiving him as Lord and Savior. Doing what God says do. We're abiding in him. And to continue to believe the gospel, even through tough and rough times in your life, continue to believe in the gospel. That's abiding in the vine. That's staying in God's vine. Amen? There's tough times everywhere. in everybody's life. There's going to be tough times. It's going to be tough times. I heard somebody say, you know, the character of a person, of a man or a woman. Is when they get knocked down, can they get back up? Or will they get back up? Because you can get back up, but will you? Will you, when the enemy comes against you and he thinks he has the upper hand and he gets you to a point or state of your mind when you think that the enemy could be overcoming you, 
right? That's where he wants you to get, that state of mind like that there, you know? What kind of character do you have? Are you going to abide in the vine? Because that's what the Lord wants us to do. He says, because if you don't, you can't do nothing. Then the enemy will defeat you. We will be defeated. But as long as we're abiding in the vine, there's nothing too bigger than God. Amen? We will get victory. You will. He will keep you. He will keep you until he comes back or until we leave here. Amen? We will be kept. What do you mean we will be kept? What do you mean we'll be kept? That means your salvation will be kept. You will have life eternally with him. That's what that means. It doesn't mean that you're going to have a bunch of cars, houses, or whatever. You're going to have all this popularity. What that means is I'm going to keep you until you can be with me one day. And then you're going to reign with me forever. And you will not be thinking about this place, these houses and cars and stuff here. Because you'll be living in that mansion. Amen? That he has for us. A place that he set aside for us. That he set aside for his people. Amen? That's what that means. Now, this leads me to a point, And I want to ask another question. Who in the Bible, Pastor, I don't want you to answer this. Who in, who in the Bible that was a branch of God that got cast off and it withered? Let me say it again. Hold up. Don't just think about it. Let's think about this now. Who in the Bible was a branch of God and got cast off and withered? Who? Judas. That's one. Judas. And you know what? As soon as the Lord brought that to my chest, I said, Judas. And I was right. I don't know. You know what? I can't. I mean, you know, I'm not even going to judge Judas. I'm not judging no one, but this particular person, I don't have to judge. He was already judged. He was already judged, and he told us who he is. Can anybody tell me now? Who? Say it again. Say it again. Satan. Check that out. See that? You know what? I didn't think he was, he's the obvious. He's the obvious. He was a branch, right, and got cast off, and he withered, and he withered. Hey, man, when, I've got him, when, he, when he mentioned that, I'm saying, oh, my goodness. Oh, yeah. He was a branch. See what I mean about reading this again and just getting something? We read this over and over. I read this over and over. And I couldn't get it. I still didn't get this here. Satan. He had power. He created him. He was beautiful. But you know what he wanted, didn't want to do? He didn't want to abide in where? <laughs> he didn't want to abide in the vine. Yeah. Yeah, we're going to read about him. I don't want to spend too much time about him because he ain't worth the time. But, but what we're going to do is want to expose him, though. I want to expose him. But, yeah, it's Satan. Satan, you know what he had? I don't know what I was reading. He, he has a bunch of names. Over 30 to 40 names he's mentioned in the Bible that he's called. And you know he's nothing but deception. That's all he is. Amen? Satan. We're gonna, we, we got three things here that we know him pretty much about. His name, Satan, there's Lucifer, and the devil himself. Amen. And his mission is three things. Steal. The what? Kill. And what? Destroy. That's three things. That's his three things that he's about. And you know what? He's sneaky. He, 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 he's sneaky. He can steal right in front of your face, and, and if you're not in the spirit, or moving in the spirit, or abiding in that vine, he'll steal off you. If you're not abiding in the vine, he'll kill you. And if you're not abiding in the vine, he'll destroy you. 
He'll destroy you. And he does it in such a slow process, a slick way, where you think it's not him, but it's him. But he'll be exposed. He's exposed. He's exposed. You know, somebody I can judge is him. If you want to judge somebody, judge him. You, you're allowed to judge him because, you know, it's easy. He's guilty. He's no good. He's death. He's not life. He's sorrow. He's not joy. Amen? He's not. He's the enemy of God. That's who he is. He's the enemy. If he's the enemy of God, he's the enemy of us. Turn to Isaiah 14. Get your Bibles. Isaiah chapter 14. Uh, verses 12 to 15. Abiding in the vine. Amen. He says, How art thy fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thy cut down to the ground, which did weaken the nations? You know what? When I read that, I said, weaken the nations. My goodness. The United States, weaken. We are weakened. We are weakened. Because there's div a divided house will what? Divided house is going to fall. Divided house is going to fall. All the nations are going to believe that Jesus is the son of God. That it's not abiding in the vine. Or weakened. Or weakened. Who says that Jesus Christ is not the son of God who believes that and preach that and teach that they are destined for hell. They're weakened. And he will weaken nations. The United States was built off of we believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God, and now we don't want to mention the Son of God. We want to don't hurt nobody's feelings. Somebody comes up to us. We don't want to tell them the truth to abide in the vine. We don't want to tell them that ye must be born again to enter into the kingdom of heaven. We refrain from doing that. Some of us in our families, we may not even do it to our own family members because we're afraid what they might say or how they will take it. They're weakened. Amen. They're weakened. For thou hast said in thy heart, I will ascend into heaven, and I will what? Exalt my throne above the stars of who? And I will sit upon the mount of the congregation in the size of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like who? Most high. Yet, Isaiah tells him this. Yet. Thou shalt be brought down to where? And to where? The sides of the pits. Sides of the pits. Sides of the pits. Satan want to be God. He didn't want to continue to abide in God. Satan had his own agenda. Some of us have our own agendas too. Amen. People in the world, they got their own agendas. Leaders, governments, they have their own agendas. When they go to meetings, they have an agenda that they want to follow. They have things that they want to get accomplished and talked about. They got things that they want to vote on. But guess what? God got his agenda. There ain't no voting. There's no voting. This is the agenda. This is the way things go. Amen? Amen. He wanted to be God. But what I want to do is go back to that verse again. Go back to verse 6 in John 15. Now, in this verse here, we know where he's gone, right? But Jesus is telling you, if you didn't read this verse before, let's read it now. Let's read it now. He says, if a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch, and he is withered, and men gather them and cast them into where? Where's the devil gone? 
And he's going to be burned. He's telling you there. I seen that. I said, whoa, shoot. That's where he's going. He's going in the lake of fire. Amen? You know why he's going there? Because it's like those branches. The reason why those branches are being burnt, because they're not abiding in who? The vine. Satan, we just read about it. He wasn't abiding in what? So, all those who don't abide in the vine will be cast away, cast out, they will wither, and they will be burned. Ooh, man, that's crazy. But you know what, though? That's the truth. Lucifer. Lucifer. Cast down here. He didn't go anywhere. He didn't go. You, you ever notice this? I, mean, I was talking with my wife, you know, about somebody who was acting a certain way who usually don't act like this. The person is out of character. The person that's good character, they acted fine. But this particular person here was around some other people. And so she, she started acting differently. You know why? Because Lucifer got kicked out of heaven. He's here on earth. And all those who believe with him are here. Now we have a mind, soul, and body. We have now. And if we're not abiding in the vine, we're opening ourselves up. And those spirits are running around here. And if there's spirits running around here and you let them in your body, then you're going to start acting like them. Then you're going to start acting like them. If somebody's out of character, that's out of character, and I'm talking about out of the character of God, you got to wonder where that person's been. Or who is that person letting into their spirits? You gotta wonder. Amen? You gotta wonder. Who's letting them? Who, what are they doing? What are they doing? But Satan had his agenda. He still got an agenda, too. He's still trying to finish that agenda. He's not, he won't, you know what? You know what? That agenda will not be completed. That agenda will not be completed. Amen? But God has an agenda for us all. You see, he wanted to be above God. And I think in Ezekiel 28 too, Tyre, a, Tyre, a, a king of Tyre or something was being just. And he himself said, I want to be, he, he tried to be a God too. Some of the saying, we won't have to turn there, but it's in Ezekiel 28 too. And he wanted to be a god. He was a king. The Lord told Ezekiel to tell him, you know what? Because you're trying to be like me, I'm going to set people, nations against you. That's, the nations is going to destroy them. See, God allowed a lot of things to happen for reasons. He allowed a lot of things to happen for reasons. But that's what he said. So if anybody who tries to be God or tries to take a place of God are in trouble, amen, God says he will not share his glory with anyone, with anyone. And should you go and try to deceive someone? That's why teachers got to watch teachers. Teachers, I'm telling you, if you don't teach right, you will be held accountable for what you teach because you're leading somebody who's ignorant to the fact. Who ignorant to the fact, to the truth, who's ignorant to the truth, you're stirring them down the wrong way. That's why you have to watch when you teach. Amen? So, anyone who teaches their children, family members, friends, even their enemies, and said that there's not a God, or say that you don't have to be born again. Or say anything that's coming against God. They will be held accountable for that. Amen? Be held accountable for it. I want to close now. Turn to Isaiah. Isaiah 45. Chapter 45. I want to close this scripture. And we'll read this scripture. Amen? There's only one God. There's not a lot of other gods. There's only one and Satan, we read about Satan, how he wanted to be God. Well, this is God's agenda, and this is his answer to the devil. 
Lucifer, whoever you want to call him, prince of the darkness, the enemy of our souls, whatever you want to call him, here's the answer. Amen. We there? All right. Isaiah 45, 18 through 25. I'm going to read 18, 18 through 25. Here's the answer. For thus say of the Lord that created the heavens, God himself that formed the earth made it. He has established it. He created it not in vain. He formed it into the inhabitant. I am the Lord. There is none else. I have spoken in secret in a dark place of the earth. I have said unto the seed of Jacob, seek ye me in vain. I, the Lord, speak righteousness. I declare things that are right. Assemble yourselves and come, draw near to the, together, that ye are escaped of the nations. They have no knowledge that set up wood of their graven image and pray unto a God that cannot save. Tell ye and bring them near. Ye let them take counsel together. Who have declared this form ancient times, who have told it from that time, have not I the Lord? And there is no God else besides me, a just God and a Savior. There is none beside me. Look unto me and be ye what? Saved. All the ends of the earth, for I am God and there is none else. I have sworn by myself the word is going out of my mouth in righteousness and shall not return. That every what? This is the this new two testament to this. That every knee shall bow and every tongue shall swear. Surely shall one say the Lord have our righteousness and strength. And even unto him shall men come and all that are incensed against him shall be ashamed. In the Lord shall all the seeds of Israel be justified and shall glory. That is his answer to the devil. That is the answer that God gives to his people. There is no other God. Don't look for no other God. There's only, there's only one God. That's Jesus Christ, which is the Son of God. Amen. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord.